One of my favorite projects in the short lab is a couple of new ways to measure radiation damage or even just damage to materials much more quickly. This gets back at the whole problem of getting solutions and ideas out to the nuclear power industry or to other industries in a timely manner. It usually takes 20 to 30 years for information to get out to nuclear power because the experiments are expensive, they're radioactive, it takes years to collect a ton of data and it's hard to interpret. So I got thinking, how can we get answers in days, not years? I'd like to take the sort of innovation speed you see in the semiconductor industry and all the freaking apps going on everywhere and bring that to the nuclear industry. So we got thinking, how can we measure damage to materials while they're being irradiated? So we don't have to do the cook and look strategy where you cook something in a reactor for a year, let it sit for five years because it's too radioactive to handle, cut it open and look at it, right? You don't want a five year development cycle to get one answer to one question. So we developed a modification to an existing technique called transient grading spectroscopy or TGS. It was actually invented here at MIT by Keith Nelson for a very different purpose for sort of chemical spectroscopy and thermoelastic material spectroscopy. We're taking it and using it to measure radiation damage because it takes six laser beams all converging on a single point in space where you have got a little sample material here. Six lasers come in, a bunch of lasers come back out and they excite and probe surface acoustic waves or saws on the material. And as we watch those acoustic waves decay, it tells us things like the elasticity, so how stiff is a material, how well does it pass heat through it, and a bunch of other things about how the microstructure changes. Then from the side, we can fire in a beam of ions or protons, radiation basically, and measure how these properties change during the radiation, not after. This takes about a year's worth of work, irradiating lots of materials and looking at them in electron microscopes, and it takes it down to a day or two. So what, what using TGS allows us to do is take the previous day's results and use it to inform the next day's work. Usually the way things go in nuclear is replace the word day with year, and that's the way we do things. So we're cutting the development cycle by factors of 100. There's a lot of different ways that radiation degrades structural materials, the things that hold reactors up. And we're looking for fingerprints in different material property spaces, whether it's thermal properties, elastic properties, acoustic properties, that indicate major material failure modes. One of them that's been plaguing the industry and is only going to get worse is called void swelling. When you irradiate materials, they just get bigger. You, know, you, you see this happening on TV with like, you know, a rat drinks some radioactive waste and it gets bigger. Now in reality, it usually just dies, but metals do get bigger. Uh, you actually form tiny little atomic defects that find each other and form pockets of vacuum and make the material physically swell. That can block coolant channels, it can change the geometry of the reactor, and it embrittles things, or it makes them not ductile, not good. We want to look for signatures in the material properties we can sense to say when does void swelling happen, and then take that information and make new materials and see when that void swelling happens, and take another material, and you get this like iteration cycle where you could make a new material one day, check when it void swells the next day, come back the same week and try another material, brainstorm and try again. Instead of this sort of one material a year thing, I see so many conference talks where people are like, I took the same alloy everyone's looked at for 30 years and irradiated it with neutrons and here's the result of 10 years of work. Unacceptable. This is, this is too slow. We're not going to have a nuclear industry to support if this is the way we do things. So we turned it on its head and said, we're going to do this kind of semiconductor level innovation and measurement for the nuclear industry. I said, oh, I want all my projects to have five years from conception to impact. We're about three years into this, and we're barely funded at all, actually. We have some seed grants from an international design center between MIT and Singapore. But so far, we've not managed to secure industry funding, probably because things with six lasers and lots of physics sound esoteric. But what we have done is built an in-situ TGS beamline at Sandia National Lab's accelerator lab where you can take a beam of ions to simulate neutrons and radiate things a lot faster than reactors can, and now we can measure them at the speed we can irradiate them. Lots of folks have been using ions to simulate neutrons because you can irradiate things in days instead of weeks, but then there's all the work of figuring out what happened, cutting them open, looking in electron microscopes, and we want to short circuit that part of the process. Look for the material property fingerprints that change with radiation. 
So then we can take one material, you tell us this is how you made it, we tell you this is when it starts to swell. You tweak your chemistry, send us a new one the next day, we tell you the next day. And we just got it as part of the National Scientific User Facility through Idaho National Lab, so other people can propose time to use it. Now as of this, as of this video, or as of this point in time, it's just about ready for commissioning. We're doing our first tests on it, and I think in a few months it's going to be open to the public. And that's when I want other people to say, send me your alloys. You think you've got a great material that's going to change the face of nuclear? We'll tell you if you're right in days, not 10 years. So anyone that's thinking of building a new reactor, or a different kind of reactor, or replacing a component in an existing reactor with something that'll be impervious to void swelling, we think we can tell you the answer in a time frame that you need.